Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to start solving another type of static equilibrium or complete equilibrium questions in two dimensions. Now in this type of problems, we're going to have a beam or a shelf-like object that's going to be held against the wall, usually by a cable or by a rod. Let's check it out. So in some static equilibrium or complete, or complete equilibrium problems, we'll have shelf-like or beam-like objects being held against the wall, tension against the wall, like this. So first force I'm gonna draw here is the mass of the beam, which will happen in the middle. There is a tension here, T. It's at an angle theta. So we decompose this tension into Tx and Ty, all right? Now, in these problems, we're going to have the hinge apply a force against the beam. So notice how there's a Tx to the left. These are equilibrium questions. All forces have to cancel on the x and the y. All torques have to cancel. So if there's a force to the left, there has to be a force to the right. And that's where the hinge comes in with a force on the right. So we're gonna call this Hx because it's the hinge force on the x-axis. So the hinge will always apply a horizontal force against the tension, okay? So tension is going like this, which means Tx is like this, which means Hx is like this. In fact, more specifically here, I can say against Tx, okay? The hinge will almost always apply a force Hy on the beam. So the hinge will also have a Y force, um, and it's most of the time it's going to be helping hold it. We're going to assume that Hy is up. The reason why I say assume is because sometimes it's going to be down. In fact, if you get a negative for Hy, meaning you're calculating um, Hy and you end up with a negative number, that means that you guessed it incorrectly. You assumed the wrong direction. If you get a negative for Hy, Hy was actually down. But that's okay. And what I mean by that's okay is that it doesn't mean your answer is correct. It doesn't mean that you have to start the problem again. Okay, you just realize, oh, well, it was actually down and then you fix that. But you don't have to restart the question with it pointing down. Okay, so you see how this works when I start solving the question. There's an HY here. All right. So just before we do an example, I want to talk about um, why there has to be an HY force. Okay, so you're, you don't need to really understand this to solve the question, but I just want to talk about this very briefly. Um, you have to have a Tx so that you cancel with an Hx, that's easy. Uh, but why do you need a Ty if you already have a force canceling Mg? Why do you need a Ty? Well, uh, why do you need an Hy rather? Well, let's say if you didn't have an Hy, then Ty would have to equal Mg so that the force is canceled. The problem is Ty is farther from the axis at the hinge than Mg is. And if they, have, if they had the same forces, this torque here would be, would be much greater. Same forces, but a bigger R vector. So this torque would be greater, it's farther from the axis. So this thing would spin like this. So that doesn't work. So in fact, what we need is we need Ty to be less than Mg. Ty needs to be less than Mg so that it, they actually, because it's farther, so that they balance in torque but now it's not enough to hold it on the y-axis, so there needs to be another force on the y-axis. That's why HY exists. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry about it too much. You don't really need that um, in solving questions. We're just gonna assume that there's always an HY up. So let's solve this problem here. We have a beam of mass 300, mass equals 300. Um, I'm gonna put that in the middle here, right there. So that's MG. I'm gonna use gravity as a 10, so 300 times 10 is 3,000 mg. Um, it's four meters in length, that means that this distance here is two meters, and then this distance here is two meters. And I have a tension, it's held horizontally against the vertical wall by a hinge, got a hinge here, and a light cable as shown. So there's gonna be a tension here. Um, this is T, it's gonna split into a Ty and a Tx. I'm going to put Tx right here. Uh, the angle here is 37 degrees. Okay, and I want to know what is the A, tension on the cable, and B, the net force that the hinge applies on the beam. Before we talk about B, 
uh, let me draw the hinge forces. Again, there's going to be always an HX to cancel out the TX, and we're going to assume an HY up as always, okay? Now, net force on the hinge is a combination of HY and HX. You have HY this way, HX this way, they're going to combine to form a H net, and that's what we want to know. Um, H net will simply be, we're looking for H net, uh, the net force by the hinge will simply be the Pythagorean of its co uh, of its components. So hx squared plus hy squared. I like asking this question here because to find hx, you basically have to know how to calculate everything else. So it's sort of um, a comprehensive question that guarantees that you know almost everything about this question. Okay, so I got all my forces here. Remember, once I decompose... Um, once I decompose T into TX and TY, I don't really have a T. Same thing here. So we're going to use the component forms, TX, TY, HX, and HY, and not the total vectors. Okay? So as with any, um, as with any complete equilibrium questions, I'm going to start by writing sum of all force equals 0, sum of all torques equals 0. So sum of all forces in the x-axis equals 0, sum of all torques in the y-axis equals 0, and there are only two forces in the x-axis I have, hx, tx, they cancel so I can write that one equals the other. And on the y-axis I have two forces going up and that's going to cancel with the one force going down. So ty and hy going up equals mg. First thing we're looking for is t. Um, in this equation here, and by the way, the way we're going to find t is by finding tx or ty and then we're going to find t, okay? Remember that tx equals t cosine of theta. So I could technically replace this with t cosine of theta, but I don't want to do that. We're going to leave everything in, in, in component form because I think it's much easier this way. So we're going to leave them as tx and ty, and then once you find tx, you're going to be able to get t because you know the angle. Or you can get ty first and then find t, okay? So really when we're looking for t, we're really looking for TX or TY, whichever one we can find in the easiest way. I cannot find TX because I don't know HX. Um, I cannot find HY because even though I know MG, I don't know HY. So these two equations by themselves are insufficient. So I'm going to have to write a third equation. So one, two, three. The third equation will be sum of all torques equals zero about a point. And we want to make sure that we pick a clever point to solve this. If we're looking for T, we're first looking for either TX or TY, both of which act here, okay? Both of which act at this point here. So what we want to do is we want to write a torque equation at a point away from that point where the T is so that T's will show up on my torque equation, okay? So I have a few points that I could pick here, one at the hinge, two at MG, and three at the end where the tension happens. Remember, you always want to pick torque, uh, you always want to write the sum of all torques equals zero equation um, at a point where there's a force. That's why it's either one, two, or three. You want to write it at a point where the force you're looking for is not at. So I don't want to write this point. This is a bad point. I want to write it at one or two. And here, one of the two is actually better than the other. Point one is the best point because there are two forces, HY and HX. And if I write it here, I will have fewer torques, okay? So point one is the best point to write. Now, hopefully you're convinced that point one is the best one. I wanna sort of go um, off, um, off to the side real quick and talk about a different point here, which is the fact that no matter which point you pick, one, two, or three, there will never be a torque by HX, okay? and there will never be a torque by Tx. And that's because these guys are pointing in the direction of these points, right? So both of these guys will never produce a torque, okay? At least not if the hinge is vertical, I mean horizontal, okay? So really, no matter what, you only had one torque to worry about uh, here, which is Hy and Mg. And what that means is that you could have really picked either one of them, all right? But I had already convinced you about number one, so let's just keep going with that. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. All right, so there are two torques about point one. 
Let's draw point one right here. Remember, HY does not produce a torque because it's on the axis. HX does not produce a torque because it's on the axis and because the R vector um, would make a 90 degree angle anyway. Um, if it had some length, um, I have MG halfway here, and then I have TY. TX does not produce a torque because the R vector, I'm just going to draw this real quick here, but I'm going to delete it. The R vector between, um, the, the angle between the R vector for TX and the TX itself makes an angle of 180, the sine of 180 is zero, right? Think of a door. If you push this way in the door, it doesn't spin. So you're really left with just these two guys, which is awesome. So MG is pushing down, so it does this, and TY pushes up, so it does this. They go in opposite directions. The torque of MG is clockwise, negative. The torque of TY is um, counterclockwise, positive. So I can write that torque MG equals torque TY. And I'm going to expand both sides of this equation. This is going to be mg r sine of theta, and this is going to be ty r sine of theta. Okay, theta is not necessarily the 37. Be careful, right? The r vector for mg looks like this. It has a length of half of the distance of the the length, which is length of the bar, which is two, and then this vector here is the entire thing, four meters. Both of them, notice, make a 90 degree angle here. So sine is actually 90, not 37, because we're not talking about T, we're talking about TY. Okay, so that's one of the advantages of doing this in component form, leaving the TX and TY, not using T. Okay, so both of them are 90, so this is going to be 1 and 1. Now the distances are MG2 and TY4. Okay, and I have that TY equals 2mg divided by 4, in other words, mg over 2. And this, by the way, should make sense. Some of you may have thought about this when I was talking about up here that ty is double the distance, so it can't have the same magnitude as mg. In fact, it has to have half of the um, force of mg so that the torques balance. And we just sort of proved that here, okay? So in a question like this, where the tension is all the way at the end, um, and you have a horizontal bar with no masses on it, so the standard most, most um, simplest form, um, you're gonna have the TY is MG over two. I know MG, so TY is going to be 1500 newtons, okay? So I got TY. Uh, that's good news because remember, once we know TY, we'll be able to find T by connecting, by using the equation that connects the two. TY is defined as T sine of theta. So T is TY divided by sine of theta. So it's 1500 divided by sine of 37. And if you do this, if you do this, you get a T of 2500 newtons 2500 newtons okay um so we got that t is 2500 newtons up here now we want to know h net to know h net i need hx and h y okay so let's look for hx and let's look for h y in no particular order Notice from this equation over here that hx is tx. I don't know tx, but I can get it. Uh, now I can get it. So hx is tx, which is t cosine of theta, which is 2500. We just got that, cosine of 37. And if you plug all of this in, you get that this is 2000 newtons. That's good. Now all I got to do is find hy, and if you look around, you will see that there is, um, you'll see that there's an HY equation right here. I'm trying to get an arrow there. That's going to be hard. Um, there's an HY equation right here. Okay. And now that I know TY and I know MG, I'm going to be able to find HY. So no need to write a new equation. We already got that. So TY plus HY 
equals mg. So hy is mg minus ty. mg is 3000, ty is 1500. So hy is 1500. This shouldn't be surprising um, that hy is 1500. Same thing as ty. ty was holding half of the mg. So hy had to hold the other half of the mg. Okay? So now I can combine to find h. h will be the square root of hx squared plus hy squared. And if I do this, I get hy is 1500 and then h I do this backwards hx is 2000 hy is 1500 and if you combine this you get 2500 newtons okay um, this is the same as this which is not a coincidence it's not a coincidence okay so this type of problem I'm gonna call this the base case because it's the simplest problem uh, when you have the beam with the tension at the edge no masses on top it's a pretty interesting situation because this is very symmetric there's a lot of symmetry in this problem and the symmetry is that ty will equal hy uh, obviously tx always equals hx because the y's and the x's are both the same, um, I'm going to have that um, t will equal h. And the angle that t makes with the horizontal will be the same angle that h makes with the horizontal. So you see this angle right here. That angle here is going to be 37. All right. So that angle, the theta of h in this problem, if you were to calculate it, you would get it 37. So there's a ton of symmetry here. Um, kind of interesting to notice. So that's it for this one. Hopefully it's made sense and let me know if you have any questions.